Hallelujah. Amen. Okay, so as you guys know, we've been going through, um, uh, we've been learning about the armor of God. Okay. What have you been learning about? The armor of what? The armor of God. Silaza Mungu. Silaza Mungu. The armor of God. And so what we learned is that um, there's a lot of things that take place that we can't see. Okay, that we don't see. Spiritually, we're here physically. God has created us and He's given us the bodies. He's given us the physical body. So we're here. God has given us the physical body. We're in this on this earth. Everybody's alive. We're all happy with. But even with the with the with the physical body, and it's here. With the physical body, within you, there's a spirit. Sema, within me. Say with me. There's a spirit. There's a spirit. Okay, and that that your spirit. That spirit, that, that's, that's who you are. That's you. You get me? Okay? Your spirit, your soul. God has put us your spirit, your spirit, your soul. You have it in you. And that is indestructible. Okay? And it means that when you die, your body dies, but your spirit, it goes by you, you have already decided. You made that decision when you're on earth. Amen? Amen. So, but, as we're here on earth, God has revealed his truth. He has not put us here on earth um, just without anything. Okay, he's put us here with with a lot of things. He's he has revealed himself, number one. Okay, he didn't put us here and say, Okay, you're on your own. See ya when you die. No. Mm -mm. That's not God. Can you imagine a parent, your father, your mother giving birth to you, you know, and then they're like, Okay, see you when you grow up. I see you at your wedding. <laughs> Make sure your husband is good looking. Yeah? I see you at your graduation. Bye. No. That's not what God did, you know? Mungu, when God gave, when God created us, okay, and he breathed into our, our bodies and gave us life, he didn't just put us in a way that we will, will be lost and confused. No, he revealed himself. God has revealed himself in everything. Before, even when you're in your mama's womb, when you're in, the, in your stomach, in your mama's stomach, you were, God was already, work, God was already revealing himself to you, himself to you. He's always been there. So God, number one, he wants you to know that he is, he is who he say he is, okay? That God exists. The first thing that God wants for us to know is that he exists. Number two, that he cares, and number three, and he's given us everything. That the everything, I mean, particularly, he's given us everything to overcome this life. Hallelujah. Amen. He has given us. God has given us everything to overcome this life. I know a lot of us. We are some. Sometimes we get to a point. I know some of your 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 pictures on Facebook. You know, when you take them, you know, you, you can't imagine these people. Are, they don't live in this world. They look like they live in heaven or something. I mean, you you know, they their, their lips and their eyes and they're, they're like, you know, you know, and hashtag blah blah blah. You know. When you go to a concert or you go to, you, you're in an airplane, you know, somebody's about to take off you're at the airport, you take pictures, hashtag, you know, airport, you know, you sign in everywhere you go, you know, I mean, when you're having a good time, you're just going loud, showing everybody what you do, you know, mm -hmm. so for some reason, we, we try to create an environment that is not, you know, it's, 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 it's a fantasy, it doesn't exist, it's a fantasy. You're creating an environment. I'm not. I'm not trying to. You know. But this. This is a fantasy. You, it, it's in your mind. You know. Yeah. Some. Sometimes you talk to yourself. You're not crazy, but you know. Uh, it's. It's a fantasy. So you're creating um, a reality that doesn't exist because you want others to see that they're missing out. That we because we want others to see that hey, my life is better than yours. Some people want. You want others people to realize that 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 that, that, that your life is better than theirs. Okay, but then when the, the camera is not, when the people are not taking no pictures, nothing is there, nobody, nobody's around. You're actually suffering. You're struggling. There's pain. There's you know there, there's emotional pain. There's emotional hurting. There's abuse. There's frustrations. There's uh, there's all kind of stuff that has happened in your life that are really that have pondered you and and you're wondering, man, what is this life about, man? What is is this really what it is? You know, you sometimes when you're by yourself. 
you know, sometimes we try to medicate ourselves. We give ourselves medication, and this is this is a this is what we call self medication. This 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 is a self medication, you know. So what we do with this is we want this this to keep us busy, because because every time when we're looking, we are here, we're looking, we're we're here, we're looking, we're busy on our phones. Every time we're doing this, it, it makes us not to think about what's going on in our life. It it, give, it makes us escape. <laughs> Who is liking my photos? Nobody. Okay, all right. Let me post another one. <laughs> this one, they're gonna like it. No, oh, they're better. And then after you post it, nobody likes it. And then you go to all to your friends. Hey, did you see the picture I sent? Can you go to my page and like it, please? Thank you very much. Eh? You know, I mean, you. And then you look, you're looking for status updates. You're like, oh my goodness, uh, what is these people up to? Oh, they think they're having a good life. Oh, let me show you what mine looks like. Yeah. Mine is better, you know. Oh. Okay. Um, so look. So um, you know. So what we're doing is we're really trying to keep our mind busy because we're trying to escape. We're trying to escape. We're trying to run away to really face reality. We don't want to face reality. We don't want to face the, the the reality that we're struggling at school. We're struggling at home. We're struggling with life. We're struggling. You know. Matter of fact, a lot of you guys. You you know. We're growing. You guys are growing in a life where a lot of things that are new they're happening. You don't know. What to do, you know, um, you know, you know. There's attraction, opposite sex attraction. There's all, and then you have all these homosexuality movements, and you have people doing experiments. People are ex experimenting sex, show stuff. They're experimenting drugs. People are calling you to try out new stuff. So there's all these things that are that's all around you, and you wonder, what is this? What is this? And why and where is God? But I'm here to tell you that God didn't just put you on earth and say, see you later when you die. No. The reality is, the one who has given you this life on this earth, he has provided you with the tools and everything that you need to overcome it. Can I get an amen? Amen. He has given it. Now, you get in trouble. You get in trouble when you, listen, you get in trouble when you decide to not listen, to not obey, to do your way. Listen, you're going to do things on your way and they're not going to succeed, they're not going to, you, you're going to fail, you're going to fail every time. You're going you're gonna to try, oh, God says this, hey, yeah, right. He's over there, sitting over there, he doesn't know what it means to be, no. You know, a lot of times people, they try to do, Let me, I'm going to do it my way, this is my life. Some people say, you know, they say, um, um, YOLO, right? YOLO? Yeah, yeah. You only live once? Like, oh yeah, this is my life, I do what I want, my life is short, I need to make sure that I do everything I can, however I can, whenever I can. YOLO. Did you know, you don't really live, you don't just live once, you live forever. You live forever. Even when you die, you will be alive. It doesn't, uh, the question is where? Either hell or heaven. But you don't live once. The word YOLO, that is come from the devil. Because what, what makes you, what happens is, when you think that, you only live once, it makes you want to do all things. It makes you want to do all crazy stuff because you don't want to miss out. You don't want to die. So, I don't want to die a virgin. Oh my gosh. You know, I, I, I don't, what if I die right now and I haven't even smoked pot? I haven't even done meth. And you know, I, what if, you know, I, you know, so that is why the word YOLO is. It's like, okay, I need to do all these things because I don't want to miss out. But that's not true. You don't live once, you live forever. The question is where? There's only two places. Hallelujah. Amen. That is really totally from what I was planning today. But we are learning about the arm of God. And this is part of the thing that God also has revealed to us. What, is, what has God revealed to us? So let's look at Ephesians chapter 6. Okay. Thank you to everybody that brought their Bibles. God bless you. Amen. <laughs> Ephesians chapter 6. It's Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10. Listen to me. It says this. A final word. Be strong in the Lord and in His mighty power. This is God's revelation to us. This is what God is saying. This is what He says. Put on, put on all God's armor so that you will be able to stand firm against all strategies of the devil. So that you'll be able to, to overcome, to stand firm against all the strategies of the devil. For we are not fighting against flesh and blood. You know, a lot of time when you somebody's giving you a hard time at school or whatever in your life, or somebody's look is is is, is abusing you, or somebody's a dummy, sometimes it's a demon in them. Yeah, 
Sometimes it's a demon in them. And what you gotta do is you feel like you wanna punch him in the face, but really, when you punch him in the face, you're just making the demon even more mad, and the demon's gonna try to come and back at you. What sometimes you need to do is pray against that person. Pray for that person. You hear me? So listen, for we are not fighting against flesh and blood enemy, but against evil rulers and authorities of the unseen world, against mighty powers in the darkness world, against evil spirits in the heavenly places. Okay? He says, therefore put on every piece of God's armor so that you will be able to resist the enemy in the evil time. Be able to put all the pieces of God's armor. God has given you an, an, an armor. Okay? The Bible says, listen, there's an attack. God knows that the devil is on this earth. Okay? God knows that the, the devil is on this earth. God knows that the devil is attacking you. But God has given you everything that it requires for you to overcome it. Hallelujah. Amen. And so this is what God has given us. He says this. Stand your ground. And anybody remember what we've already talked about? We, we, what, what, what are the body armors that we've talked about? The body armors that we've talked about. The, the, the helmet. Shield. And okay, what does the helmet stand for? Huh? What was the helmet? Uh, what did it stand for? Salvation. Salvation. Okay. okay. What else? Okay, helmet. What is that we talked about? The belt. And what did the belt represent? The truth. Truth. Yes. What else have we talked about? The shoes. The shoes. What did the shoes represent? Peace. Peace. Oh, yeah. thank you. What else? Chest plate. The chest plate. Chest plate. Yes, body armor. What did that represent? Uh, the heart. So the helmet was salvation. The belt is truth. The shoes is peace. What did this represent? Righteousness. Oh yeah. Righteousness. What else? One more. You're yeah, missing one more. The shield, yes. What did the shield represent? The shoes. Faith. Huh? The yeah, shoes. Shoes of peace. What did the shield represent? Huh? Faith. Faith. All right. So we started with the belt. Okay. We talked about the the breastplate, which is also the body armor. Okay. And then, which is righteousness, truth, righteousness, peace, shoes of peace. Okay. Helmet of salvation. Shield of faith. Okay. These are your spiritual body armor the, the, your, your, the, the, that God has given you to overcome the devil. The only way you can overcome the devil, number one, is you have to be saved. The helmet of salvation. Okay, listen. You have to be saved. You have to have faith. That's the shield. You have to believe in the truth, the word of God. You have to live a righteous life. You have to walk according to the word of God. You have to obey God. And then number three... And the other one was, um, I think I just said all of them. Peace. Peace. The shoes. You have to preach the gospel. You have to show other people that God is loving them. God is there for them. But today we're going to finish. Okay. Today we're going to talk about the last piece. The last piece of the spiritual armor. Amen? Amen. So that one is in verse um, 17. It says, put on salvation as your helmet and take the sword... Of spirit, which is the word of God, and take the, um, and which is the word of God. Okay? So, today we're going to talk about the sword. The sword. I think sword in Swahili is panga. Panga. Or panga. Panga. The sword. Now, what comes in your mind when you hear the word a sword? What do, what do you think about? The sword? Yeah, what, what, what comes in your mind other than the sword? Death. Death? Yeah? A sword can kill. What else? I'm scared. You get scared? Knife? Sure. <laughs> you know, the reason why I'm saying a sword is because I think most of us are not really familiar with the word, what the sword is about. Now, in the back, back in the days, the military, they didn't have, they didn't have machine guns. You didn't go, I'll open it up a vita, a bunduki, I'll open a bunduki back in the day. They didn't have, they didn't have, they didn't have guns. They didn't have machine guns. They didn't have airplanes. They don't, they didn't have the rockets. They didn't have the, the grenades. They didn't have any of this stuff. What they had was arrows with a bow. They had rocks. 
They had uh oh. huh? Let's go. Yes. And then and then and then they had they had the, the machetes. They had swords. And so those those are their weapons. That's what they In our, in our days, maybe a, a sword would be compared to a gun or something, but not really. Because a gun, you can stand at a distance and you can hit somebody with it, right? But listen, a sword, a sword is different. Okay? We, we learned last time about the weapon of choice of the devil. Do you all remember? Um, what was the weapon of choice of the devil? <laughs> An arrow, right? A fiery arrow. And this is what I say. Okay, so God's weapon of choice is a sword. Nanilo, mm -hmm. you understand me? You hear me? Mm -hmm. Yes. God's weapon of choice is a what? A sword. A sword. A sword. The devil's weapon of choice is a what? A fiery arrow. A fiery arrow. Listen. An arrow is a weapon of choice of a coward. Eh, mtu mwe an Right? The person who is afraid, they'll use an arrow because they are scared to get close to you. So they will come, you know, they were right here. They're gonna come back, come back because they're scared. They're scared, they're here in the corner. They're just gonna stand here in the corner. They're gonna aim at you with an arrow or fire, okay? Waiting for you to, in order to get that opportunity. Once they get that opportunity, they go, boom! They let go. Right? That's a coward. That's a coward. Somebody who's scared. Somebody who's, who is not, who has no power, he has no authority. Somebody has no strength. They just wanna, they, they, they cannot, they're not able to come really in your face and, 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 and take care of business, okay? They're not, they, they cannot come in your face and take care of business. That is the devil. The devil's a coward. But it doesn't mean, like I say all the time, it doesn't mean that he cannot, he cannot, he doesn't have power. Yeah, he's a coward, but it doesn't mean he doesn't have power. He, he has the ability to destroy you. He's very skilled. He's very, he has, he, 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 he's very talented. He can do damage. The devil can do damage. But listen to the weapon of choice of God. The weapon of choice of God is what? A sword. You know what a sword is? A sword is that you have to come face to face with somebody. You have to face each other. You have to come where they are. Eh? If I had a sword and I want I'm, and you are my enemy, I'm coming to you with my sword. And I want I want to challenge you. I want you to fight me. Eh? I want you to fight me. That is a sword. That means I know without a doubt. You know, the reason I want to come to you with a sword is because I know without a doubt that I'm going to beat you. I know without a doubt that I'm going to win. That's why God's choice of weapon is a sword because he, he is victorious. The devil has nothing on him. The devil cannot touch him. Not, matter of fact, I always say this. The, the devil and God, they're not com then there's no comparison. You cannot compare the devil and God. They're a different class. Number one, the devil is created. Who created the devil? God. God. He was an angel, right? Yeah. So the devil is a created being. God is never created. God is bigger. God is all powerful. So the devil cannot be compared with God. That's why the, 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 the God's weapon of choice is a sword because he knows. He knows he can just go to the devil and just. So he doesn't have to go and hide in the corner and, and, and take an arrow and say, What's the devil at? No, no, no. He can go find the devil and do this right away. So the sword. The sword is our weapon of choice. As believers, that is our weapon. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 But the weapon of choice of God, the sword, the Bible said that it's the word of God. Your sword is the word of God. It is important. Listen. It's important to know the word. It's important to know the word. It's important to know the word of God. Because it is only through the word of God that you can overcome the devil. 
Okay? How many people have memory bus? You have a verse that you know, memory bus, other than John 